Welcome to the Pennsylvania Trolley Museum. There's a lot of cool structures, platforms, and car barns to see around our visitor center, but this is going to be the first place you enter. Our visitor center is the place where you buy tickets, browse the gift shop, let the youngsters run around and play with the toy train sets, try our trolley simulator, or use the restrooms. The first structure you'll see when you step out of the visitor center on your left is the brown shelter. Its unique shape and color make it very noticeable from the start. It was built as late as 1910, and it was made by the shop makers in Mars, Pennsylvania, and eventually transported uh, to the Butler Short Line where it served until 1931. After the line's abandonment, it was a private garden shed until 1984 when it was donated by the private owners to the Pennsylvania Trolley Museum. In 1990, it was professionally restored and finished up in July of that year by the Pennsylvania Trolley Museum volunteers where it sits today. The next structure you'll see is our West Shelter. Most historians believe it was built sometime around 1908 for the Harmony Short Line route north of Pittsburgh. It was named after West Farm, but a man by the name of Ziegler actually made his money off of this stop, transporting milk by freight along the trolley lines. It was also a very popular stop for Pittsburgh's natural beauty. North of the city, people trying to get away from the smokestacks in the early 20th century, it had a camp and an adjacent guest house. It was moved away from its original location uh, for most of its life until the 1980s when it was moved back. The museum members found out about it and it was eventually donated to the Pennsylvania Trail Museum in 1992. After Pittsburgh Railway Companies completed their interurban line from Washington to Pittsburgh in 1909, they began constructing shelters along that line, including this one, the Richville Structure. It sat in Cannonsburg, Pennsylvania and serves a standard tin plate company right across from Sarah's Candy. It was named after the plant's two senior managers, and eventually after the line's abandonment in 1953, it was moved as a school bus stop to a local school district. At the behest of a couple of well-known businessmen, uh, in the 1980s it was moved here, where it sits today, and you can pick up a trolley and catch a trolley just like the workers did at the Standard Tin Plate Company in the early 20th century. That does it for the shelters around our visitor center. We're going to go over to CJ and he's going to talk a little bit about what's going to happen on the platform and once you get your ticket as well as the car bar and some other things you might see and possibly ride if you visit us in person here at the Pennsylvania Trolley Museum. Once you get your tickets, you're going to come up to the sidewalk here up into the platform. Uh, this is our main boarding area where you'll either take the ride car or the tour car. Behind me here, car number 4398. Uh, this car was built in 1917. It's a Pittsburgh low floor car. Uh, we've completely rebuilt this car basically from the roof down. Uh, went into the shop in 1977 for some paint work. We started taking off around the bottom and found rust and the rust continued the whole way up the car to just below the tops of the windows and it did that the whole way around. Uh, normally if rust goes up that far it means that at one point in time this car was submerged in a large body of water. Uh, I'm not sure if any of you know any time Pittsburgh histories, uh, but there was a significant event that happened in uh, 1936 in St. Patrick's Day flood. You could go Google or go to the library if you still have that by the time you're watching this and uh, see pictures of streetcars in Pittsburgh where the water goes to just below the tops of the windows. So we believe that this car is one of the ones that did unfortunately get caught in the flood waters down in downtown. What that meant was that we, the roof is good. We jacked up the roof and basically built a brand new car underneath. Came out of the shops in 2011, basically a factory fresh car has been running here ever since. So this is Founders Car Barn. Whenever the first three cars were moved down here on February 7th of 1954, there was nothing here. There was only uh, this track here, uh, which would have continued on. The barn wasn't here at all. Would have continued back through and went on into Washington, continued the other way and went on to Pittsburgh. Uh, over the 10 years from 1954 to 1963, volunteers actually built the barn uh, up. That's why it doesn't look very, very professional. It looks very, very homemade. Uh, and from there on, we rebuilt the uh, yard here and have extended the line the other way, as well as over on the uh, main line side, we went up the valley on a former Pennsylvania Railroad mining spur. Trolley Display Building, it's where we house most of our collection. We have 52 cars in total. This building holds 36 of that. Uh, you'll get up, come up here on a guided tour. Uh, in future, hopefully self-guided, you'll get to see about half of the collection during the tour uh, that's currently in here. You'll also get to see Wexford Deli uh, slash station, is what it used to be, 
an original trolley station from the uh, Pittsburgh Harmony lines. What you see behind the trolley display building in Wexford Station is the site of our new museum and visitor center. It should be open late 2022 and we'll have a variety of conference rooms, interactive exhibits, and it's a $13 million project with 28,000 square feet along with a park, water fountain, and a trolley street. That does it for our self-guided tour. If you're interested in any events or birthday parties, please be sure to visit us on our website. We have our phone number listed there as well. Hopefully you can get out here and see us in person where history connects us at the Pennsylvania Trolley Museum.